Welcome to another screencast from BlenderGrid.com. This is Richard and today we're going to take a look at how to render faster using the adaptive sampling feature in Cycles. So if you don't have time to watch this entire video and learn about how this feature works and what problem it solves and all that good stuff, but you just want to get a nugget out of it, then what I recommend is you just set up your scene like you would usually do and then check this box and make sure everything is set at zero, uh, the default, which means that Blender will take an educated guess at what the value should be and uh, set it for you pretty much. It's like a set it and forget it kind of thing. And just turn this on, render it again, and most likely the render will be way faster and the image quality does not go down by much. It might go down a little bit, in which case you have to slightly increase your samples, but it will still be faster than not using it. So that's my TLDR uh, tip. Now let's talk about what this setting is actually doing and what uh, what problem it's solving and how you can use it and tweak it to get the most out of it. So I've set up this very simple scene uh, with a bunch of basic objects uh, to uh, to make a point to to show how this works. So let's look at what you what you get when you render this um, without the adaptive sampling. And let's zoom in a little bit on this. Uh, so this is what it looks like with 128 samples in cycles. And as you can see, a bunch of areas here are a little bit noisy. Um, for example, here the caustics of this glass material uh, object is, uh, is not that nice. And uh, Suzanne has a little bit of a complex shader with some uh, subsurface scattering going on which makes it slightly harder to render and uh, this these areas require more samples however areas like this are completely clean um, here like this simple ground material it's just gray that's pretty clean and you don't really necessarily want to add more samples there so what the the problem here is if you want to make this image look clean you would normally just increase your samples but then you will also add more samples to these areas and what does sampling do basically sampling is basically the amount of compute power that you dedicate to your image so doubling the amount of samples will double the amount of compute power required to render. And so also double the amount of render time. And you don't want to dedicate more compute power to this area because it already looks good. You only want to dedicate it and, and selectively um, add it to the areas where it's required. And that's what adaptive sampling can do for you instead of adding the samples everywhere it will adaptively sample the areas where it thinks it's the most noisy and blender uh, cycles has this algorithm that can determine the amount of noise in the image so it will look and while it's sampling when it hits a certain area of low noise it will just stop sampling and when it's looks at this area it's like okay there's too much noise here still so we keep on sampling until we hit uh, your your number here okay so let's um, let's just look at this um, the render time was about a minute on my little laptop here um, let's hit J to go to a different image slot uh, we're at slot 2 and let's just turn this on without doing anything and re-render this again and see what happens. 
All right, so with the default settings of leaving everything at uh, at zero here in inside of the adaptive sampling panel, we already see we get a better, a faster render time. And when we look at the difference in image, you see the noise is a bit uh, different. The the randomness, that's just the randomness, but the amount of noise is not that much different. Let's zoom in a little bit more. This is eight times zoomed in. And both images have noise. But as you can see, the areas that are um, very, uh, that, that don't require many samples will have a little bit more noise in the second time with the adaptive sampling. And that's that's what this feature is doing. So let's zoom back into this level. So that's what this feature is doing. It allows you to um, not dedicate as much samples and render time, uh, compute power to the areas that don't really need it and only add it to uh, the areas that do need it. So in this case, we would like to add more samples to these kind of areas. So what we have to do is increase uh, the amount of render samples, which will be considered the maximum amount of samples that will be used. So we can set this to a very high level, maybe 1024. Um, when we would render this without adaptive sampling, it would take really long. But when we uh, now set a noise threshold and we tell Blender, okay, if the noise is below, say, 0 0.01, which is pretty high, this is a pretty high level, um, then you can just stop sampling. And currently the minimum samples is set to zero. And when this is set to zero, Blender will take your maximum amount of uh, samples, this number, and it will take the square root of that. Uh, and so that will be 32. So when we hit 32 samples for any pixel, and we are below this noise threshold, which is an arbitrary number that uh, it's just a measurement of how much noise you have. The lower this number, the less noise this this is. So when you start sampling the first time, the first sample, it there's a lot of noise. Um, and as you move on, the noise will get lower. So when you hit uh, a number below this number, this threshold, it it will stop sampling when it has the, the minimum amount of samples. So currently when it's set at zero, it takes the square root of this, so it will be 32. So let's f just fill in 32. So it will, regardless of the noise, it will sample 32 samples for every pixel. And then from that moment, it looks at all the pixels and it kind of measures in an intelligent way how much noise there is. If it's below this number, it will just stop sampling for those pixels. And if it's not below, it will keep going, keep going until it gets low enough and then it stops. And then it keeps doing that until it hits uh, a maximum number of samples of 1024, the number you set here. So when we, um, and, and you just have to experiment with what this noise threshold, uh, what an acceptable level is for you. If you set it at zero, Blender will um, kind of use a number that's based on your maximum number of render samples, uh, like the description says. So uh, yeah, zero for automatic setting based on the number of AA samples, that's this number. Um, and when you, uh, when you use square samples, it will be this number. Uh, that's the video we did before. Uh, let's not talk about square samples now. Okay, so let's try to render this and 
again, this is a fairly high noise threshold, so it will stop sampling quite soon. But let's see what happens. Okay, that's done. It's it only took 41 seconds compared to the other image, uh, which took a minute. And I'm also recording uh, my screen on this computer. So it might not be entirely accurate, but uh, it took 41 seconds. And as you can see, I would argue there is slightly less noise in the faster one in the adaptive sampling one. There's slightly less noise in these most noisy areas. But in the other areas, like the ground here, there's a little bit more noise. But overall, what this effect is doing is that the overall image has a more uh, even distribution of noise. And that's because when we're sampling and when we're, we're taking the samples of these pixels, and we hit a certain noise level which Blender measures, we hit that 0 0.01 level, it just stops. And that's why these areas that used to be better, they, those would get, in this case, um, the number of samples was set to 128. So these would all get 128 samples, which leads to not, not that much noise. Now, Blender considers these areas, okay, the, the noise is below your threshold and we stop sampling maybe at 32 samples already so these areas get less samples and these areas get more samples so that's what we're doing and if we want to get a less grainy image now it would not help to increase this number and I'll just show you uh, I'll just uh, set this to something very high 4000 and 96 and uh, let's render this uh, actually let's go to um, view our render let's go to another slot number three and let's render this we are going slightly above now but instead of 41 seconds, we're at 43. And that might be a result of my screencast uh, software recording the screen, which, you know, takes some CPU power. But um, pretty much the same render time. And so if you, uh, if you want to make this image less noisy now, uh, we will have to add more samples to those areas we will have to uh, spend a little bit more time rendering. But the way to do that is to now lower the noise threshold. So let's lower this to 0 0.05. That's half of what we had before, half the noise. And we can keep this at a very high number because now pretty much this number will determine how much computing power, how much samples the areas of the image get, and it does it based on how much noise there is, which is a, a way more intelligent way of doing things. And we can even make it more extreme by saying the minimum number of samples very low. So if, for example, the top of this chrome ball, um, if you look back at the render, the top of this chrome uh, sphere here that almost doesn't need any samples because it just hits this ball and then it reflects back to the sky which is just this gray color uh, just the environment color that doesn't need even need 32 samples probably for uh, noise to get lower so we can win a little bit more uh, by setting the minimum number of samples very low here then it when, when it hits four samples it looks at this area and it's like okay there's no noise here so let's stop working on this and let's go to the more important areas um, so let's set this to something like four which is crazy low and uh, with a lower noise threshold, it will spend a little bit more time on those other areas. So now it might take maybe, uh, probably definitely longer than a minute on this uh, poor little laptop. 
and as you can see, the image looks very, very clean. If this is a one to one scale, let's zoom in. Still looks very clean. Only when we zoom in a lot, we, we start to see that noise, but this is already an acceptable level, I would say. And uh, we spent one and a half minutes on this. Now, if you would contrast that with the time it would take to get this level of clean image without using uh, the adaptive sampling, I am not sure how many samples uh, were used here to reach this level of noise, but I would say maybe it was 1024. So let's use 1024 and now turn this off move to our layer three let's look at layer four and re-render this and look at how long this will take if we don't use adaptive sampling with just a thousand and twenty four samples regardless of the noise level okay i just stopped the render because it was taking way too long we're already at two minutes and we only rendered this i think this is way less noise than um our number three so let's lower this to 512 and look at what happens um, oh, I accidentally rendered it on slot 3 um, but I'm trying to get a similar noise level as what we had before with the adaptive sampling and see how much longer it takes. And here now the ground gets 512 samples, which is way more than necessary. But you, you, as you see, the, the ground is crazy clean. It's like perfect. But that doesn't matter because this area is not. So um, this is the weakest part of the image now because this has the most noise. And now I think we get, we're getting a similar noise level as what we had before with the adaptive sampling here on Suzanne. Um, but it's already at 1 minute 30 and the previous one took also 1 minute 30 for the entire image and here we're not even half done. And Blender thinks it's gonna be taking 4 more minutes. So this is a massive time saving if you use adaptive sampling uh, properly and I'm gonna cancel the render again because it's just taking too long so with the adaptive sampling um, your render samples here become the maximum amount of samples if it hits anywhere in your image if you hit this number of samples it will stop this is gonna be the maximum amount this is gonna be the minimum amount and if you don't want to set this, you can set it at zero and Blender will take the square root of this number. Um, but you can set it to a very low number and then it will just stop sampling when it hits that and when you are below your noise threshold number. And 0 0.005 is already an acceptable level in this case you have to uh, experiment with this a little bit the same way you're normally experimenting with more or less render samples but once you use this adaptive sampling you just set a high maximum amount here and you don't really have to touch it much uh, what you will be playing with more is the noise threshold and that will um, uh, that will have a big influence on how long the render is taking and how much noise there is going to be. So that's the recap of how to use this adaptive sampling method. I hope this helps and I hope this helps you render faster, uh, save time if you render locally. And if you render on blendergrid.com, I would still encourage you to play with this because it can save you a lot of money when rendering. So yeah, that's it. Happy blending and I will see you in the next one.